Okay, so here I am again outside. It's really nice outside today. Great day to be stuck at home. Um, you know, if you're going to be trapped at home, might as well make the best of it. Hope everyone else out there is staying safe and uh, hopefully healthy. And if you are at home, you know, try to do something to keep your mind from going crazy. So I thought today let's go bananas and I'll draw this little banana bundle that I have here. A little bunch of bananas. I do have to draw a bit quickly though because <laughs> they're sitting right in the sun and I don't know how long they're going to last. So I will uh, attempt to draw them as, you know, pretty quickly today. I'll do a quick sketch um, in pencil and then I'll ink them up. And uh, this one I'll try to do quickly. I'll do it all in one video, hopefully. All right. Let's get going. Quickly following the curve. I do this little technique called air tracing where I trace the shape in the air and then repeat the motion on the paper. One. And then what I have to do is line up the line up the bananas, you know, sort of in the order that they fall. One banana uh, compared to the next banana, like this one, starts right at this point of the second banana. This is the lower one down here. Okay. You can see a little bit of it because this next banana goes right over the top of it. I use my pencil to kind of line up the angle there. The angle's like that. I bring it to the page and draw that on there. Curves up. Curves again. Fairly vertical line right there. Slight angle. Okay, so there's two. Uh, the third one that's hiding right there. See the little stem right there. Okay, now this big top one here. How big is it? Let's see. One, two. So we go one banana, two banana, a little bit more. One banana, two banana, a little bit more. One banana, two banana, a little bit. Okay. One banana, two banana, a little bit more. So that one's right there. And the line. Basic angle is like that. Slightly tilted, good. It's got a bump. The bump is directly north of this. So I'm gonna bring it over. It bumps right here. And then this width compared to, well, that's too much. Let's find out how long it is. Right there is the same as finding a coincidence. Okay, from here to here. This line to this line is equal to from here to the end of the banana. So that was just finding a coincidence in the proportions of things. It let's me know how long the banana is. And then from there, I can just kind of follow its, its angle, its curve here. This little weird little bump at the end. Curves down this way. And then straightens out to join the rest of the banana. It's got a you know, funny little end there. quick. Okay, there's three. There's just a hint of a fourth banana hiding in the background over here. All right, there's the end of it. Okay, right there. There's the last banana that we can see from here. Okay, now I'm going to finish off the front of all this big bundle of junk up here extra stem from one of the bananas I've already eaten. I, uh, did I just say eaten? Like a very well-pronounced T for some reason? Okay. There's all that. Put the little 
sides so we can recognize where the parts are. Yeah, I've eaten one or two of these bananas so far um, in, in smoothies. I had uh, an orange and a couple of bananas, threw them in the blender with some ice, gave myself a smoothie. Okay, I think we've got the basic shapes rendered on there. And what I'm going to do now is get the shadow on there, the shadow, I'll just follow the curve of the shadow, right there, comes down, lines up with the end of the banana right there, so it comes to this point right here, double check that right there, basically connecting the banana to the shadow with the pencil, and then I bring the banana, drop it down, the shadow comes right there. Now, I'm outside, not studio lighting, so that shadow is going to change if I don't draw fast enough, this shadow actually probably will run off the page. Let's check. Yeah, it's going to run way off the page. It's going to be way over here. It comes off right there. So this shadow goes way off the page like this. It's kind of nice, actually. And there's another shadow here. Smaller. Got a little sharp bit at the end. There we go. Now I'm going to take a big fat marker and I'm going to Put those shadows on there first. I think that's a very fun way to get dramatic really quickly. Get the shadow on. Boom. Okay. Like that. Let's fill all this in. Hopefully, I don't run out of ink in this marker. I've got plenty of markers though, so I could definitely survive the apocalypse for a while if ink was a necessary thing during the apocalypse. I tend to think it would be. Inktober must last forever. I mean, didn't uh, Costner, what's his, what's his name, Costner? Uh, God, I forgot his first name. Did Waterworld and Postman? Maybe, maybe he can come up with like Ink Man for his next post-apocalyptic movie. I really, you know, actually, I'm one of those type of people. You know, I like zombie movies and stuff like that. But I, generally, just because zombie movies are a version of a post-apocalyptic movie always been sort of into that one of those typical dudes i guess about that kind of stuff and uh you know part of it is while sort of that sort of going through that sort of fantasy about living through some sort of apocalyptic situation um you know i always imagine being that guy with the sketchbook who journals everything in a sketchbook drawings of the post of the world after some sort of apocalyptic event um Completely useless member of society, apparently. Like, you know, if they are choosing uh, team leaders and stuff like that, I don't know if the artist would really make it into the uh, upper echelon of the, the decision-making team in any sort of survival scenario. But hey, man's got to draw. I have other skills. <laughs> I hope. I hope we all have other skills. You know, I can kind of fish and I know how to camp and <laughs> I can tie a rope and build a thing with some wood. So hopefully those are skills that would be useful as well. All right. So this is all the big bulky dark black things I've put on here. Some of the real extreme shadow kind of stuff I wanted to put on right away. It's gonna be quite a dramatic looking banana sitting here in the sitting here in the sun. So that means the shadows would also be quite dramatically, you know, uh, illustrated. Okay.
Now I'm going to go onto a, a marker. And uh, this one will be a little bit for some bold lines, but not as fat as this heavy stuff. I am not the most subtle with my line work. It's bold in the beginning. And then I get into like more finesse, you know, a little delicate line work later. But right now it's all bold, heavy mark making. Okay. Especially like, you know, whatever's in the foreground, the foreground banana, if you will, is going to have really strong, bold lines. Curve along the front. There we go. All right, so there's that. Make sure that doesn't look too crooked there. Okay, I'm going to give some more sort of mid shadow here. And I'm going to go over it after with the brush pen to give it more of a soft, delicate touch, but. This is all rough, rough, quick stuff in the beginning. Okay, definitely some heavy blacks up in here. Okay. Okay. Alright. Now we go into the brush pen. Now that I grabbed the brush pen, I realize it's quite warm because all the pens are sitting in the sun. So I'm going to toss them over here into the shade. My bananas are still cool because they were in the house quite cool. They're still, you know, maintaining their low temperature. Um, but I don't know exactly how much time I have here before they start to get warm. You don't want them to get warm. Fruit in Korea. Um, I've noticed, of course, doesn't have all the the chemicals that you might have in the U.S. The uh, the pesticides or whatever. Maybe they're not as you know GMO based. And so, what happens is you bring your fruit home, and very quickly, your fruits start to get brown or bananas, especially. Like immediately, I swear the flies just follow you home from the supermarket because you'll get little flies in your house. Um, immediately when you bring a banana into the home. It's not like there's more flies in, in Seoul than in my, you know, home country, but I believe it has to do with the, the nature of the actual food itself. Okay, so now we're throwing on some shadows, uh, more, you know, light, lighter shadows mid-tone kind of stuff. I'm following the the line of the banana, like the surface direction of the banana. Basically what I think is, if I were to follow the banana around and put a stripe on the banana, I'm not sure if we can see this in the camera, but that's the line that I'm going to follow. So it's going this way, curves around, and then goes this way. Like that. So any sort of shadow lines I draw would also follow that direction. So anything going across, like cross contours would go this way, when they get to the bottom they're going to go along this angle. And that helps the viewer understand the 3D nature of the object. I know my hand is in the way there, sorry. Like that. Put a little bit of line work here. Okay. Now, there's a lot of little dots I'm going to put on as well. All the little, like, Imperfections will be added as well. What are we on here? We're on about what, 10 minutes? 14 minutes, oh boy, okay. I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll pause it, keep inking for a bit, and then restart it after I've jumped ahead. So I'm pausing for a second. Be right back. Okay, so I've added a bunch of uh, more shadowing details on here. 
uh, got through a bunch of it and am just about ready to call this one finished. I don't want to go crazy with the, you know, super delicate stuff. It's still supposed to be sort of a pen, what I would call a pen sketch. Or something that was doable in about a 20 minute set, 20 minute session. Um, I like working fast. I like keeping it, you know, it's supposed to look handmade basically. It's not supposed to look like a photograph. Um, I do love, you know, detail and stuff like that, but at the same time, I want to make sure. I don't lose the fact that this was made by a human being, human hand. Right. The final step on a drawing like this is the kneaded eraser. The kneaded eraser is the artist's friend, especially ink artist. It's sitting outside in the sun, so the kneaded eraser is very soft today. It's almost, it's almost like playing with some chewing gum right now. It's so soft, really soft. And as long as the ink is dry enough, I can go across and remove my pencil lines. There you go. Little bundle of bananas or a bunch of bananas. There we go. Let's get it close up. That's how she looks. There we go. Bananas. Drawing of bananas. Thanks for watching.